Today is the day we're finally getting rid of this chrome grill. I'm super excited. Let me show you what I got. Welcome to Snail Trail 4x4. I'm Jimmy Jett. If you like building Toyotas and going off-roading, then this is the channel for you. Hit that subscribe button down below. Today we're gonna to be doing a grill swap, but we're not doing any normal grill swap. I'm not doing the TRD grill swap, which everybody out there is doing. I wanted something different and something specific and unique to my vehicle. So what I did was I found a grill by Taco Vinyl. He's a really cool guy. He does a whole bunch of really interesting things for the Tacoma, all kinds of grills, different types of grills, and all kinds of vinyl wraps and vinyl different stickers and things of that nature, all for your truck. So let me show you the grill I picked up. So here's the grill I got. What I really like about this grill is that it's different than the TRD grill. Um, it's pretty simple, straightforward. It's got the Toyota letters in there, kind of hard for you guys to see. I went black on black because I wanted it a little bit more stealthy to looking. Um, and then we have the Raptor lights right up at the top. So that's gonna be cool. I'm gonna try to figure out a way to darken these up. I just don't want the bright orange right up there in the front. Now what's super cool and unique about this grill is that here in the corners are LED lights. And so right in this area, you can turn these into a blinker or a daytime running light um, on both sides. So it's gonna be really rad to have this up in the front in this area and have daytime running lights here and daytime running lights there. I'm really enjoying my new hood struts that I installed. I'll have a video link for that up at the top, one of these sides. Um, it's so, so nice. I literally, you can just flip and let it go and it lifts itself. Uh, these red line tuning hood struts was an easy install and I'm super stoked on them. Now what we gotta do is we gotta pull the tab right here two bolts and the tab on the other side, and we can yank this out. So to pop the clip off, that right up here in the front, what you do is you just take a screwdriver and you just pry it underneath and pop that up, and then these things come out nice and easy. Now you gotta do that on both sides. Pop, pop, come off. Now we need to pull the 10 millimeter bolt that's here and over here. Now it's as easy as pulling it straight off. You just need to give it a solid yank and it should come off. You got a few little clips underneath here. Oh, and I like to pull these ones up that are connected to the grill because they are kind of snapped into place. But just give, grab the grill, give it a good yank. And it just comes right off. Now that we have the grill completely out of the vehicle, we have to undo all these tabs. There's a grip load of them all the way around. And on the front, there's actually kind of two pieces. You have this like outside little trim piece and then the actual inner grill. Um, so you have to remove the outside trim piece first. I'm just gonna try to do them all at the same time. Um, also, there's a series of screws that you're gonna need to undo. Um, and then there's some that you don't. Really what you need to concentrate on is the ones that are around the tabs are the ones you need to undo. So I think there's gonna be about eight. Let's see, one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, eight screws that you need to do. Um, and then all the tabs, and then it should pretty much fall out. Now to undo the tabs, we kind of just pinch them and push them. It's uh, sort of a pain in the butt until you get a few going. Um, also, they are pretty fragile, so don't pinch them too, too hard, because uh, they will break. All right, there we go. Trim piece done. Now to remove the rest of the grill. Where'd my pliers go? One more to go. It's tight, but I can get it there. And then we just pull this guy off. Oh no, did one snap in? Nope. Okay. Boom. If anybody wants that old grill, the chrome one, let me know. Uh, hit me up at DM me on um, Instagram or write something down in the comments below. Let's work something out. So you probably noticed before, but I just have a towel down so I'm not gonna be scratching anything up. I'm gonna move some of these cables onto the inside just so they're out of the way. Now what we do is we just take the old bezel around the old frame, color frame, and we're just gonna line up some of these holes for the clips 
and you just make sure that they line up and just push them through. And it's just that simple. So as for screws, it doesn't look like the screws that we took out are gonna work anywhere. So we're just relying on these clips, which is more than enough. And just to give us a better understanding of what's going on here, let's take a peek. Oh yeah, that is looking awesome. I'm so excited for this. Now you could choose different letters. He does let you choose different ones. I chose Toyota, you can put Tacoma, you can do Yoda, you know, toy or whatever. I'm sure you can choose the letters. He also has color matching um, text for um, this as well. I chose to go black on black. I was considering doing the metallic gray um, version as well, but I wanted to kind of be a little bit stealthy. Um, I'm sort of second guessing myself. I'm not sure what I would have, um, if I, if the gray would have looked good or if it would have stood out way too much. I think this looks rad. I think this is gonna be awesome. I'm super excited for it. Now it's time to play with the electrical. One of the things I wanna point out is that it comes with this box and it has a good diagram telling you everything that you have. These guys go out to the um, new LED lights and then these are parts of hooking up either the blinkers or the daytime running lights, which has a bunch of wires coming off the bottom of it. Um, also I added, um, a bunch of shoe goo or just some like, you know, silicone into these holes here as sort of a stress relief and a way to protect the box and from getting dust inside of it and water or any ingress of that nature. So, um, I just did a little protection in there and just let that sit for a while. So now what we're going to do is hook this up. And one of the things I found is that this blue wire is the shortest one and the blue wires to the blinkers and the blinkers happen to have the yellow on the driver's side and blue on the passenger side. So I'm gonna be installing this box on the passenger side in that area, just so that I can um, keep the wires as short as possible and not extend anything. So let me show you where I'm gonna put it. So here on the passenger side, I have some temporary wiring done. I've connected this, um, the controller box to the outside here. I'm gonna put it actually on the inside in this same spot. There's a, already a factory hole there, but I put this here because then I drilled a hole on the underside and I know that that's gonna fit just right. Uh, these wires are gonna be running off in different directions, but one of them runs, or three of them, the black one for the daytime running lights that has the red, the white, and the black wires go down here. I've connected them to the passenger side daytime running lights to the red, or excuse me, the green, the blue, and the white. I'll show you a diagram on how I connected those. I also, up on the top here, I connected the blinker. It's kind of hard to see on this angle. Here we have the plug out of the blinker. The blinker is the one that's closest to the grill on the back side. High beams and low beams is over here. So the blinker has two wires that are coming out of it. One's kind of a gray or a salmon or tan color, and the other one's a black and white. My understanding is the black and white one is a ground and the tan one is a is more of the power or the on sort of switch. And so I got these cool clips I wanted to show you guys here. And what they do is they wrap over the wire and then um, allow you to put a plug on the end. And so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of untwist this a little bit we are going to clip on this adapter and it just folds over the end and then you just squeeze it together. I'll get my pliers and just give it a little pinch, not too hard, just enough for it to snap. There it goes, snapped, closed. So now we have a spliced into that area wire for that blinker. Now on this side, what we do is we are going to crimp, crimp on these uh, connectors here just by a simple crimp. These are, it's a small wire, so I go with the small version. Crimp there, I'll crimp the insulation a little bit. There we go. And now on our battery, or excuse me, on our blinker, the, what we're gonna do is we are going to push this over the top and into there. Let me put this on real quick, put this in 
back on. And now I'm gonna hook up the grill and we're gonna see if everything works. I'm not gonna push this up into place yet. I'm just gonna kind of set it up here. I'm gonna connect the wires, just sort of push them into place. This is just gonna be a test. I'm not, nothing is ran and sort of into place yet. I am just putting these in there to make sure that everything is gonna be working. I'm just gonna lift this up and over and I'm just gonna gently put it into place. I'm not gonna clap it, cl snap it in yet. Okay, so doesn't that look awesome? Now let's try to turn on the blinkers. I'll do my hazards. So let's do that. What's that first? That should be fog lights and daylight, daytime running lights. Yes, look at that. That is so cool. This grill is rad because it has these built-in LEDs on the side here. It looks so good. So we got that going, we got that going. Now let's check and see if the blinkers work. Let's go driver's side. Passenger side. How about hazards? Oh yeah. That is awesome. Super stoked with that. Now I've got, that was the tough part. I got the, those LEDs up and running. There's a bunch of electrical plugins. I did them all the same as what I did for this blinker that you saw here. So that side is super tight, but since some of the wires are shorter, it works better on the passenger side. So it works the same, everything I did exactly the same on that side. I just connected the daytime running lights up on over there. And I drew this little diagram. And so, and I'll put this down in the notes as well. So from the controller box, the daytime running lights have an R, red, white, and black. And then the red goes to red, the white goes to green, and the black goes to the black and white wire. That's on the driver's side, but the passenger side has different colors. The passenger side, red, white, and black, you know, it's just the same, it's the same wire, just using it on the passenger side. Red goes to blue, white goes to green, and black goes to black and white. The big difference here is red and blue, red and red. So passenger side, red and blue, that's what I did over there. And then just connected it, spliced it right back into the blinker, just like you saw on this side, not the white and black one, but the colored version, which actually is blue and a blue wire on that side. So now I'm gonna run those wires, clean everything up, and now I'm gonna get these Raptor lights working. So inside of the fuse box here, um, all the way down here in the corner is one of the headlight fuses. And what I did was I put in one of these pigtails. Um, it has the fuse down there and then you put in the fuse for an inline one and then you add the fuse for the one that's there. I ran that to the hot line of the Raptor lights. For the ground, I ran it to the body ground right here. I just plugged it in there at the side. They don't sell the micro versions of these, but the mini one at the auto parts store, and I'll put a link down below, seems to be working fine and is plenty of space. So I can just plug that back in, push it down, and leave it there. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to carve a little corner out or something in that box yet, right down in here. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I think I'll just leave it now and kind of tuck some things away and see how it lies up. All this is excess cable. I'll be hiding that along the side. And then, like I said, the ground is right up there. Both of those run down here and then plug into the normal Raptor light spots right in the front, bam, bam, and bam. I've got these, the Raptor lights hooked up to my headlights. So those will come on as well up to the front and also stay on at the high beams. So as you saw earlier, I mounted the box right there, but on the inside of the engine bay, this split loom here has a bunch of the wires in it. Here's one of the plugs for the corner light. The split loom runs all the way across. Here's the other one for the corner light. The other blinkers in that split loom and runs all the way over here and connects to the blinker here. Here's the Raptor light set up. So I'm gonna tuck that in a little bit more. The problem with the Raptor lights is this guy's really close. So I have to have all this excess here, but then I got all this other excess, you know, between these, which is like, you know, they're like a foot between them. But then on the back side here, we only have about four inches or so between these here. So there's a lot of excess, but so I'll probably 
tuck it up or zip tie it right here on this hole and hold it up and out of the way just for tidiness. So what I'm gonna do on this side, so I'm gonna suck that up and uh, zip tie that, that up the, out of the way and same with over here, I'm gonna zip tie this split loom up and out of the way. On the inside, I'm gonna pull it a little bit more and tuck it up around here. Here's the one for the blinker. So I'll tidy that up and then tidy that excess for the Raptor lights um, over here. So once I'm done with that, then I'm gonna button it back up. I'm gonna wrap some electrical tape around some of the key areas that split loom as well, just to make sure everything's staying in place. Boom. I am totally stoked on these things. These are rad. I love the way that these look. I wanna darken them up so they're not so orange when there's nothing on, but I like it when it's orange and through. These corners are so cool. This is the reason I bought this grill is because of these corners. It stands out, it's different. There's not a lot of these out there. Um, I got this grill from Taco Vinyl, so I'm gonna put a link to him down below. He's got all kinds of cool stuff down there. Make sure to go check him out. And if you like this video, hit that subscribe button and don't forget, keep crawling.